there is an absolutely humongous rumor making the rounds right now. I'm sure you guys have heard about it. It revolves around Microsoft and Nintendo forming a partnership that would see Xbox Game Pass and Project X Cloud make its way over to the Nintendo Switch. Oh my god, the ability to play Halo Infinite or Master Chief Collection or perhaps Gears 5 on your Nintendo Switch? That is potentially industry changing, but a lot of people don't seem to be really on board with it. But we're going to talk about everything surrounding it. What does Microsoft get out of this whole deal? What does Nintendo get? What about Xbox gamers? We're going to delve into that right now. What's going on guys? Randall Thor 19 man with a million back again with another video. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like by the end and maybe subscribe if you enjoy the content. So if you've been listening to the Xbox two podcast, we mentioned this as a possibility about two to three weeks ago. Uh, Jess Corden and myself mentioned that we had heard rumors that Xbox game pass would be making its way to the Nintendo switch. It was also something that we talked about a year ago, uh, rumors that kind of had come my way as well. And if you've been paying attention to what Microsoft has actually been saying about how, hey, you want to play the games with the people you want and the devices you want, where you want, wherever you want, this makes complete sense knowing what Microsoft is going after. But this particular report comes to us from Direct Feed Games, and Game Informer is citing them with their own sources. So it goes on to say, According to a report from outlet Direct Feed Games, an outlet that has a strong track record for rumors, especially centered around Nintendo, Microsoft and Nintendo are about to get together in a big way in the near future. Not only will some Microsoft games find their way to the Switch, but it looks like the entire Game Pass library might arrive via the magic of streaming. The report states that Microsoft is looking into publishing some of their own catalog to the Switch in the form of actual ports. This is in no way strange for Microsoft, who's dabbled in things like lending out Rare for games on Nintendo systems and developing and publishing games on Nintendo consoles such as Minecraft. Microsoft-owned developers like Ninja Theory and Obsidian are still self-publishing their games on the Switch and other systems as well. The game specifically mentioned by DirectFeed is Ori and the Blind Forest, a crown jewel of Microsoft's lower key publishing initiatives. Additionally, report goes on to say that Microsoft will be leveraging their announced Project xCloud streaming service to bring Xbox One games to the Switch. While the Switch can't natively play as a hypoth hypothetical example Gears 5, it could stream it over the internet. This will be done through Game Pass, which allows players to subscribe to a service to access a Netflix style library of games. And according to Game Informer and in talking with their own sources, it has been suggested that the announcement of Game Pass on Switch could come as soon as this year this would be industry changing the ability to play xbox games on the nintendo switch something that you wouldn't think would ever happen a lot of people are kind kind of thinking that microsoft is going to become the new sega you know a sega used to be in the hardware business you know sega genesis sega saturn and then sega dreamcast they eventually got out of it and started selling their games third party everywhere but it's not entirely the same situation because even though we know that Microsoft wants to reach 2 billion gamers. That is the goal. How many times do you have to hear it? You hear it from Phil Spencer, you hear it from Mike Ibarra, you hear it from Sata uh, Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft. That is their goal. But you're not going to reach those players just on the Xbox console. You need to expand your horizons, go out to the mobile, go out to PC, and Switch is just another device that has a user base that Microsoft could easily tap into. This is not a surprise. This is what Microsoft has been basically saying for years now. When Phil Spencer about a year ago said that, you know, Xbox Game Pass was going to come to every device, even the PC, he literally means every device. He doesn't mean he doesn't mean every device excluding my competitors the Nintendo Switch and PlayStation. He literally means every device. They want Game Pass to be everywhere. They want Xbox. You see you gotta think of Xbox as a brand and not a console. Microsoft's end goal is no longer to sell X amount of consoles. Their end goal is to get X amount of people into their ecosystem via xCloud, onto Xbox Live, subscribing to their services. Microsoft is a services company. 
That is what Satya has kind of transformed Microsoft into. And Xbox is just following along that path. They are becoming a service. Now they're always, at least for the time being, in the immediate future, will be Xbox console hardware for those that want it. We know about the Anaconda, we know about the Lockhart. So next generation, you're set. You're gonna have the most powerful console and you're gonna have a cheap entry system. After that, next generation beyond the one that's coming up pretty soon here, I'm not really sure. But it definitely is Microsoft's goal to be everywhere and to be on every device and to potentially sell their games to as many people as possible. And people understood that, I think. They, they understood that Phil was telling the truth. But it wasn't until these rumors started hitting that they can see the writing on the wall and some people get incredibly scared about the idea of Gears 5 on the Nintendo Switch. Now, in my opinion, there hasn't been an Xbox exclusive since 2016 when they developed the Xbox Play Anywhere initiative where first party games would be on the PC day and date. And if you bought one, you got the other version for free. Quantum Break, Sea of Thieves, State of Decay 2, you name it. Any game since 2016 has also had a PC counterpart. That's when exclusives died for Xbox. And yes, that has made Xbox hardware, in my opinion, less relevant than it should be. And Microsoft clearly, with their strategy of putting their games up into the mobile space via xCloud, and now putting Xbox Game Pass games and Xbox exclusives, Gears 5, Ori 2, Halo Infinite, Ninja Theory's next game, all the studios that they recently bought to create content for the Xbox console and the Xbox ecosystem, all that more than likely is gonna be playable elsewhere other than just the Xbox and the PC. So, there are no more Xbox exclusives, unfortunately. I hate to be the one to tell you guys this. The writing's been on the wall for years now. And you can do a couple things about it. One, you just learn to accept it and be like, okay, does the idea of Ori 2 being played by someone on the Nintendo Switch really bother me that much? And if it doesn't, cool. You can play Ori 2 wherever you want. You own a Nintendo Switch, you can play it there. You own it on PC, you play it there. You own it on Xbox, you can play it there. Or you can do what a consumer has the right to do and is the loudest. Vote with your wallet. If you don't like the way Xbox is transitioning into the future, the more service-based approach, even though they're offering hardware, then vote with your wallet. And voting with your wallet in this case would mean not buying Xbox hardware, not subscribing to Xbox Game Pass, not buying those games, and using a different option, presumably the PlayStation 5 or Google service. Those are basically the options available to you. Now, of course, you can uh, be on board with this and complain, right? You could go and be like, I'm really upset about this and complain all day on Twitter and elsewhere and on YouTube about how this is the death of Xbox. But then if you go and buy the system and you subscribe to Game Pass, what message are you really sending to Xbox? Actions speak louder than words, my friends. And your actions would say you're perfectly okay with what's going on. All your words are just meaningless. They're just you yelling into the void when Microsoft knows that they have your money and that you're okay with all this. So, but getting back, that's kind of a little rant there about what some of the things I'm seeing about Xbox Game Pass and the Xbox games coming to the Switch. Now, what does Microsoft get out of all this? Well, I mean, it's pretty obvious, right? Their state of goal of 2 billion gamers. They get a user base that is hungry for games. Have you seen the MPDs? Have you seen how much software is being sold on the Nintendo Switch? Microsoft gets to access that user base and offer them games that aren't natively available on the Nintendo Switch. There might be plenty of people playing the Switch that would love to play Ori and Cuphead and potentially Gears and Halo. Microsoft can sell their subscription service to them and make a lot of money. Now what's in it for Nintendo? Well, Nintendo looks at it like this. They don't really consider Microsoft competition. They've said that repeatedly. They have a very good relationship with them. They already allow Xbox Live 
on the Nintendo Switch through Minecraft. And we're going to hear more about the Xbox Live SDK for the Switch and Xbox Live and iOS and all that stuff at GDC. So they're perfectly happy with Xbox Live being on the Switch. So what does Nintendo get out of it? Nintendo gets games that aren't available on their system. They also probably receive a cut of that subscription fee. For instance, Tomb Raider, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and Shadow of the Tomb Raider are three games in a franchise available through Xbox Game Pass that aren't available at all on the Nintendo Switch. Nintendo would love to be able to offer those games to their consumers, but unfortunately, the Nintendo Switch isn't just powerful enough to handle those games. But through the xCloud, through Game Pass, you, you could have a Switch user subscribe, make an Xbox Live account, and then stream those three games while they're playing their Nintendo Switch. So for Nintendo, you get these games you wouldn't normally get on your console. You get to keep your users on your console, even though they're logged into Xbox Live and playing those games streaming, they're doing it via the Nintendo Switch. So you're keeping your users the screen time on your particular console. That's what Nintendo gets out of it. Now, is Microsoft going to get any Nintendo games? Because this is what I always hear. What's in it for the Xbox users? Are we going to be getting Super Mario Odyssey? Are we going to be getting Legend of Zelda, etc., etc.? No, absolutely not. Nintendo's still interested in selling hardware. Uh, Zelda, Mario Odyssey, Splatoon 2, Smash Brothers, those still sell Nintendo Switches. They will not be coming to the Xbox platform. And Xbox is okay with that. Because to them, it's all about money. It's all about getting people into the Xbox ecosystem. It's all about increasing their monthly active users so they can report back to their investors that it increased this amount and their revenue increased. So Xbox gamers, what do you get out of it? Well, if you want to think about it in very specific terms, nothing, because you're not going to be getting any Nintendo games. But if you want to go down the rabbit hole, if Microsoft makes a ton of money out of this venture, if they start selling millions and millions of copies of games to Nintendo Switch audience as well as the mobile crowd, they're going to take the money that they get in this and reinvest into the ecosystem in services and games to continue to keep those people invested in the platform. So the money that you'd be, they'd be receiving would go towards getting uh, more games, better games, maybe hire better developers to get better games, maybe hire more studios to create more games. So the simplistic answer is that the Xbox user would get more content, potentially better content if Microsoft's plan comes to fruition. I know maybe some of you would laugh at that, but I mean, since everybody wants to use Game Pass and Netflix interchangeably, that's exactly what Netflix does. They use the money they get from their subscribers, they take that money, they reinvest, they create more Netflix originals and movies to keep people subscribed and try to get new subscribers. It's a constant cycle. And that's what essentially would happen, hopefully, with this now of course maybe nintendo switch owners don't care and it's a huge failure but something tells me cuphead is going to sell millions on the nintendo switch a game like ori 2 or ori in the blind forest is going is perfect for the switch that is going to sell a lot um you know gears 5 who knows how that would do and i know there's questions on there like some there are some games on xbox game pass that are also available natively on the Switch, something like Rocket League, would Nintendo be okay with that? Well, maybe the Game Pass list will be heavily curated to only feature games not available on the Nintendo Switch, because I couldn't imagine Nintendo being okay with Rocket League in the subscription service, but then they're also selling Rocket League where they actually get a 30% cut out of the sale. So you might see Xbox Game Pass come to the Switch, but be curated with games that aren't available on the Nintendo Switch. Um, those are kind of things you have to look at. Some of these other rumors also point that Microsoft is thinking about porting one of the big three to the Nintendo Switch. So that would be Gears, uh, if Forza game, or Halo, but not necessarily a current gen title. Maybe they port the Gears games back and pat, Xbox 360 to the Switch. 
maybe an earlier Forza, maybe the Master Chief Collection to showcase like the SDK cross-play stuff. Either way, this is an industry changing moment. Microsoft and Nintendo playing together and being okay with having uh, this whole partnership. Nintendo being okay with having Xbox Live on their system, potentially using Xbox Live, like party systems and matchmaking for their shoddy online network. And Microsoft basically telling the world that Xbox isn't really confined to the console anymore. Xbox is a brand, Xbox is a service. And that through Play Anywhere, if you buy a game or you subscribe to Game Pass on PC, maybe you also have it on the console, and then you log into the Switch and you have your games there through your saves and you can just continue to playing and it's just a kind of more elaborate uh, play anywhere system. I mean, a lot of people would seem to be pretty cool. You start up a game, take for example Ori 2 on your Xbox, somebody comes and wants to watch TV, you hop on your PC and you continue from where you're left off. Maybe you gotta go out and go on a trip and you just load up your Nintendo Switch and you're right there. You don't have to buy the game again. Your saves are synced. For a lot of people, that's kind of like the future of gaming, to be able to play the games that you want anywhere you want on any device that you want. And it's amazing to me to see that with how open Phil Spencer and Satya and Team Xbox has been over the years, where the writing has been on the wall regarding this entire situation, it's only now where people started to freak out about it. And I think mostly it has to do with the console war. Because the console war has been fought with exclusives. That is the ammunition in the gun. And well, if you can play Gears 5, and if you can play all the new games the brand new studios are making, like Initiative's new title on your phone, but as well as the Nintendo Switch, well, your gun is empty. Now there's no more ammunition. Now you can no longer say to your uh, adversary who is talking about PlayStation 5 games, uh, you can't have that back and forth because there are no more exclusives. There really hasn't been since 2016. People just do mental gymnastics to try to say, well, Quantum Break is still exclusive to Xbox. No, Quantum Break is multi-platform. Forza Horizon 4 is multi-platform. Regardless of the fact that it's only available on the Windows 10 store. You don't need an Xbox to play these games. And I think people are finally coming to terms with that idea that Xbox is going beyond the console and they're not sure if they like that idea. To them, the value of the console is built within the exclusives. And if they're no longer exclusives, then there's no value in the console. Now, personally, none of this bothers me whatsoever. The only thing I've ever wanted from Microsoft is more games and better games, which I think we are getting with the new studios they've made. It doesn't bother me that Ori 2, Ori in the Will of the Wisp, my most anticipated game of the year, why well, play it on the Xbox One X, that somebody's gonna be playing on the PC, potentially somebody playing it on the Switch, or somebody streaming it to their phone. That doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me that when Halo Infinite comes out, Somebody might be playing it on the Nintendo Switch while I'm playing it on the Xbox One. The value isn't lost to me. I just want to play more games. But if it does bother you, like I said in my rant earlier, you have a couple options. Learn to accept it, because you're going to have some time to, or vote with your wallet and say this isn't for me and leave. Because I'm telling you right now, 100% fact, 100% certainty, that there will be no more Xbox exclusives, period. That the Xbox console isn't as important to Microsoft going forward as it once was. Yes, there'll be consoles for you to buy if you want that experience, but it's no longer the ultimate priority. So if that bothers you, if that wakes you up in a cold sweat at night, knowing that other people will be playing the games that you used to use for ammunition in List Wars, that truly upsets you, then your recourse is to switch platforms. I know, I know it's tough, but hey, you're a consumer. 
You gotta vote with your wallet. You gotta tell Microsoft you're not down with this plan and switch to PlayStation or just get a Nintendo Switch. Those are pretty much your options because that is what Microsoft is doing. Will they succeed? Will they fail? It's too early to tell either way on that one. Could be a gigantic success. Microsoft could see more success doing this than they ever have before since they've been in gaming. Or it could be a gigantic failure. Maybe nobody wants to stream games. Maybe Microsoft's games are so bad that nobody wants to subscribe to Game Pass to play them. Maybe their PC initiative doesn't take off because the PC crowd has Steam. Why would they need Windows 10? All these things, who knows how next generation is going to play out. But I tell you what, next generation is going to look completely different than the start of this generation. Gaming is going to change. Will it change for the better? For some people, absolutely. The idea of being able to play your games wherever you want with whoever you want is massive for them. But for the old guard, the dinosaurs, the ones who have the console war mentality, it's over. Next generation will change all of that. So you either stand put with Xbox and be fine with the idea of playing games everywhere, or you speak with your wallet and you switch platforms and maybe you go with PlayStation for a little bit. Maybe you go with Google because I'm telling you, this is the future of Xbox and I've been saying it for years. So if you've been listening to me, you're probably well prepared for this whole thing. So, yeah, pretty damn interesting stuff, and I can't wait to see if this comes out to be true and the fallout that will, you know, come with it. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. I know this one ended, you know, ended up being quite long, and I am sorry for that, but I had a lot to say about this topic. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave it a like, share it out on Twitter and social media. I'd greatly appreciate it. Hit that sub button if you're new and hit that notification bell if you always want to be notified when I drop new content. Thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it and I'll see everybody in the next video. Later guys.